When we come together in worship, we light a candle. The light of the candle reminds us of the presence of Christ with us as we gather in our hearts and as we move from this space. And we hear these words from the scriptures. People everywhere, clap your hands, shout to God with a joyful voice, for our God Most High is awe-inspiring, the great ruler over the whole earth. We light this candle to spread the light of Christ into our lives and beyond these walls so that all will know new life this day and every day. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have raised your Son to be with you, and we sing to you in joy. Send your Spirit, as he promised us, to free all people from hatred and from fear, and so give us the peace of Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join together singing in Voices United number 218. We praise you, O God. Inviting uh, Mabel Appleyard forward to share with us some information about the inner city pastoral ministry and the lunch, and she'll give you more information on that. Good morning. My name is Mabel Appleyard, and I'm here to share with you some information about the ICMP, Inner City Pastoral Ministry. I am the contact person for the Bissell Lunch, and every year they send me a link to their annual meeting and their annual report. They have a website and a newsletter. The newsletter is called Straight from the Street. I am no expert on the inner city, but I would like to share with you what I have learned from these sources. ICMP has a board that's interdenominational. That means they have representation and funding from the United Church, the Anglican Church, the Lutheran Church, and the Catholic Church. 
The pastor can be from any one of these faith traditions. Then there is a staff that includes the pastor, who is now Quinn Strickweirda. It used to be Pastor Rick, but he retired. Some of you will remember going to the services with Pastor Rick. He had such a calm and uh, accepting way about him. On the one service I was at with him, I wondered what on earth was he going to say to these people that would be uplifting. And his sermon was on the importance of a smile how it can radiate acceptance to the other person, how it can welcome them. And I thought, isn't that interesting that that's a message that is not only good for the people he's speaking to, but to all of us volunteers that came with him. He was remarkable, but he retired. The associate pastor is Jim Gurnett. He was the one in charge of the service last year. He had been on a mission to Africa to put in on a new well for people that had to walk miles and miles to get water. So his speech was about the importance of water. And then there's a lunch coordinator, Maria Kruzowski. She's my contact person. They also have a Cree knowledge keeper, who is Verna Fisher. Verna leads the Standing Stone service once a month, which incorporates indigenous ceremonies and teachings. Remember that 5% of Edmonton is indigenous, but 46% of the inner city folk are indigenous. So the rituals and the customs are very important to them. In the big picture, ICMP are an interdenominational Christian ministry of presence. These are their core values. In a ministry of presence, being there is primary, and that's being there not only physically standing beside them, but being there open with respect to hear what they have to say. Everyone deserves respect and acceptance. The emphasis is on healing in all situations and relationships. They're there to express the Christian gospel in terms of the inner city experience and to build relationships of trust in the network of inner city ministries and agencies. Okay, those are fine ideals, but what do they do on the day to day? Here's some information from the pastor's report to the board. What do they do? Well, first, Sunday worship. Key to the ministry is a weekly gathering of the community of Emmanuel for Sunday worship. Though the community gathered is humble and sometimes downtrodden, the sense of God's presence is evident as we sign, proclaim the good news, and pray. They have interesting singing, too, uh, and rituals like smudging and drumming. It's an experience to be at that. As well as that, they have lunch. That's where we can come in. Many groups provide these lunches, but on the date we're going, June the 1st or June the 2nd, there are two groups participating, and each will bring 100 lunch bags. Those at the service are served first. Then tables are set up outside, and over 200 lunch bags are handed out to those lined up outside. Within a year, more than 10,000 lunches are handed out. Then they have midweek activities. The goal is to build relationships and offer pastoral care amongst the people of the inner city. The pastoral team is kept busy with visits within the many drop-ins, in homes, in city hospitals, in remand centers, in prisons, and on the street. The team tries to get to know people and understand their lives. Often pathways and openings for positive change occur in regards to spiritual care and prayer, and in regards to concerns relating to homelessness, Aboriginal healing, and reconciliation, and women's wellness. This year, there was a women's retreat at the Star of the North, 
where women were able to rest, reflect, and unleash their creative side doing scrapbooking. The men's retreat, also at the Star of the North, they reflected on the theme of water, engaged in some crafts, and really enjoyed bowling. At Christmas time, the Mount Olivet Lutheran Church made hundreds of gift bags for the street community with treats and warm clothing items. On Christmas Eve, the bags were distributed and a lovely Christmas lunch was provided by Brown Social House of Sherwood Park. Surprise. About a dozen local churches provided us with $25 gift cards from Walmart and Superstore for us to distribute to families throughout the year. And many faith communities have supplied us with gloves, blankets, socks, toques, and toiletries to distribute during the cold months. The months since December have been difficult with the aggressive approach to removing people from informal camping settlements. This resulted in increased stress, fear, and anger. Many folks have decided to relocate into the river valley and farther out from the core where services are not readily available. We have produced a special edition of Straight from the Street devoted to this issue. On November 24th, ICMP, MP, I keep getting that wrong, ICMP participated in a memorial service at the Bissell Center, where we honored the lives of more than 300 people who had died as a result of homelessness over the previous eight months. In February, we honored the lives of 150 more people. The Bissell Center has decided to offer these services for the community every four months because of the sheer number of people who are dying due to exposure, violence, drugs, and hopelessness. Here are some thoughts from the Pastoral Associates report. He says, it is clear that there is much that we do that is helpful to others, offering the shelter of the Sunday morning gathering with prayer and song and teaching, being on the street, giving out thousands of socks, toques, gloves, bottles of water, taking time to listen respectfully to the story and feelings of someone who is hurting and upset and more. He says, I have the privilege of sitting with people who are leaving this world and praying. I hear perspectives on what life is all about, what hurts and what brings joy as people share their thoughts. And finally, I have a few words from Maria, the one in charge of organizing the Bissell lunches. She is writing about food insecurity in the newsletter Straight from the Street. This is from May of 2023. She says, on weekday mornings, we sometimes bring granola bars and fruit for the folks living in encampments around the downtown neighborhood. One day, a woman who had just survived a drug poisoning came to us crying, angry tears, telling us that she did not want the paramedics to give her Narcon because she wanted to die. We gave her the little snacks we had and listened to her misery. We looked her in the eye, gently reminding her that she is an important person, that there are people in her life who care about her, and that there are others who want to help her leave her addictions behind whenever she is ready. However, it was not until she had eaten a few granola bars that she was able to feel our love and concern for her. Life on the streets is bleak, and it is even bleaker on an empty stomach. The food we, ha we hand out is part of a toolkit that allows us to give more than just physical sustenance to people. Food is a doorway to all sorts of other ways to care. But if food is a human right, these people should not have to rely on charity for their daily bread. She concluded with a prayer. Creator of abundance, you have made this earth rich in food, but many go hungry. 
Some of us feast on steak and lobster, while others look for crumbs in a dumpster. Give us a heart like yours, so we can look with love at the crowds who are in need, and use our hands and feet to share the abundance with which we have been blessed. And that concluded her speech, her article. I hope you feel that you know a bit more about the work that goes on in the inner city. I hope you will know more about what a ministry of presence is. This information comes to me, but it needs to reach a wider audience than just me. I have respect and admiration for these people who walk the streets, doing a hard job, and yet retain cheerfulness and hope. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mabel. Lots of information for us to, to think about, to remember. Uh, today, as I mentioned, Mother's Day, day we sometimes refer to as Christian Family Sunday, and so lots of thoughts about the families that are served by the inner city pastoral ministry. Uh, the experiences out of which many families come, many indigenous families, of course, are dealing with intergenerational trauma and trying to learn how to become families to one another again. So there's lots of things that we need to uh, consider about that. So in thinking about that being this being Christian Family Sunday, let's join together singing um, from Voices United 556, Would You Bless Our Homes and Families, a song, a hymn written by one of our former moderators.
Reading from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the work of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and he has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This ends the first reading. Reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and, lifting his hands up, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is part of our sacred story. Thanks be to God. Every now and then I think back two, three, four years ago. You know what was happening then. You remember how, how could you forget? Late in 2019, there was news of a virus. It spread from its places of origin, or at least what we think were its places of origin, to other countries and regions, and it spread wider and wider to reach everywhere, and we didn't really know how it spread, but we knew that it could be deadly. Not always, but enough that our fears were reasonable. And then suddenly everything shut down. Limits on gatherings, restrictions on the number of people in a store at any time, the very scrupulous, uh, be very scrupulous of touching surfaces. We even created a new phrase, social distancing. And we all tried to pivot. The word was way more overused than we'd ever used before. Meaning learning to do common things in a different way. And every day we list for reports the number of cases, and sadly, the number of deaths. 
And we also listened for changes in those restrictions and suggestions for best practices. Those were difficult times. Many people struggled. Many people worried about safety. Many people were placed in unsafe conditions. But it was also, in a very strange way, a time of clarity. In that time, we lived by what we knew and what we did not know. And we admitted that we did not know enough about the virus, so precautions were necessary. We came to learn even that we could be carrying the virus, not having any symptoms, and spread it because we didn't know. So we needed to look out for one another. So wear a mask, not to protect yourself, but to protect others. Keep a distance to protect others. Because if the virus is carried on your breath, you'll not infect someone else if you keep a distance from them. And in this time, our relationships grew more precious. Since we could not be together, we used the various means that we had to reach out. So there were phone calls and texts and emails and even posters on windows. Do you remember seeing stories of people putting up posters on the windows of hospitals or nursing homes or residences to, to greet from family and friends? In my own space, in the work I do, I needed to learn that I could trust that messages I sent out, videos I recorded, would bring words of hope when I didn't see you. We finally figured out how to make use of online meeting platforms like Zoom, and those conversations became a lifeline. Even when they were plagued with muted microphones and frozen images, and sometimes they still are, and we started to say things like, we are all in this together, and we meant it. We knew, of course, we weren't all equal. Everyone's situation was different. And we knew that safety and danger were different for everyone. But we saw how, for the sake of the world, we are all in this together. Now, I say this and I realize I do need to be careful because it can sound like I'm romanticizing a time and a period in our recent history that was very difficult. The restrictions were difficult, the loss of life was staggering, and the grief that goes along with that was worsened because we couldn't come together and mourn and remember. And we learned once again that there are inequalities, there were shortages, the economy was definitely uh, affected by this. And so I can certainly understand how recalling this time brings back anxious memories. But I raise this wondering if we saw and heard and felt the value of each human being. Because from heart to heart, we knew one another. Even as people on the other side of the world yearned for an end to pandemic fears and restrictions, we knew exactly what they were feeling because we felt the same in our hearts as well. And now we've emerged. Restrictions are long past. The boxes of masks that we have out don't get used up. The bottles of sanitizer are still out, but they're mostly ignored. And when we meet over Zoom, which we still do, it's more for efficiency and cost saving. 
when we gather online in those times, it's no longer the same joy of seeing someone else's face because we're in isolation. Last week, we got together to celebrate the anniversary of, of this building, an important part of this congregation's life. And those of us who were together, we shared a meal. And as part of that celebration, we said that it was good to be together again, that we were ready for it. But after four years, we were in a different life together. We've heard it said, and I think it really is true, that we will not be going, to, going back to life as it was before the pandemic. We have to come to terms with our losses. We have to realize that we are tired like we've never been tired before, and our energy is different, and we need to learn how to be together again and figure out what is next. Four years have passed since we lived the pre-pandemic world. Four years have passed, and we've lived with fears and worries. We've known restrictions and limitations. In that time, something of our vision has cleared, and we've said that we are all in this together, and we knew that meant something. And we've come through the pandemic, and we know that the post-pandemic world will not be the pre-pandemic world. We've been changed in that time. Now, by way of making a connection, by way of making a segue, think about Jesus' disciples and the end of their time with Jesus. Luke tells us the story where Jesus goes away, the risen Jesus after the resurrection, when he goes away. And they will not see him again. There will be no more appearances of him. He returns to God in a withdrawing moment. Luke, in particular, wanted to show that the days with the risen Jesus were past. Luke wanted us to know that it is now a different world, and we not, will not go back to what we were. For these disciples of Jesus, it began for them a long time before. Maybe it seemed like a lifetime before. But it began when he called to them, come and follow me. And with that, their lives began to change. The focus of their lives took a different direction. They learned from his words. They learned from his actions. He opened them to see that God is alive in every act of compassion. God is present in the struggles to love and move away from hate. For that life-changing time, he had been their guide and companion. He even showed them life beyond death in that time following his resurrection. And in this moment, which Luke captures in just a few words, he withdrew, and they were to carry on. They would receive what they need. They had received so much already. They are witnesses to everything that Jesus has done. So I've used the pandemic as an example to us. We have been changed through that difficult time. We are different following that challenging period. And if we have learned from it, we can indeed be changed by it. Even though we do not need to follow social distancing, do we still respect each other's safety? Even though masks are no longer required, do we pay attention to how our actions affect others. We no longer have to line up to enter a grocery store. We can gather together to share joys and sorrows. 
We do not have to show our vaccination cards. But do we still say and understand that we are all in this together? We move forward in life knowing that we are capable of looking out for the well-being of others, of everyone. We are faithful people, and we see opportunities for Christ's compassion and mercy in everything. So today, as we recall the story of Jesus' withdrawal from his disciples, we think about what that means for us. And in doing so, I'll leave you with the I think now famous words of St. Teresa, words that we've sung many times, but I think they speak to us as well. Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassionately on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good, Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Christ has no body but yours. Amen. Now that's not the song that we're going to sing at this time. So I'll invite us instead to turn in Voices United 582. There's a spirit in the air. Jesus promised his disciples that he would send the Holy Spirit to them. And we acknowledge each and every day the great gifts that God has given to us. And so in faith and hope, in joy and in love, thank you, we, res- we return a portion of those gifts to continue the work of ministry in this congregation and throughout the world.
Offerings that come now as we gather, offerings come at different times and by different means. There are so many more opportunities that we have for that. All of those offerings are a response to God's great love and the many gifts that God offers to us. Let us pray. You, O oh God, are the Easter One. You are the holy source of resurrection. You are the moving spirit of life. We offer these gifts in gratitude for hope returned, for the mystery of your grace, and for the promise of resurrection. Amen. In response, let us join together in song with the verse, Behold, behold, I make all things new. be joined together in a time of prayer. Today, as we come to this time of prayer and as we spend time in silence, as well as, out, as speaking voice, voices out loud, let us remember our neighbors who are affected already by wildfires throughout this region. And so we think of those who have been evacuated from north, in, in northeastern British Columbia, and we think of fires that are raging near Fort McMurray, near Grand Prairie, throughout parts of Northwest Territories and Yukon, and other parts, especially of Western Canada. So we remember all those who are affected by those fires. Today, O oh God, we give thanks and we pray for families. We give thanks for families rooted in love, a place of building character and learning values. We pray that families will be places of hopefulness and laughter, of grace and forgiveness, of healing and compassion. We pray for all families that, will, that they will be a source of blessing and abundant life. We remember also families that are facing trouble or abuse or difficult times. Sisters and brothers in Christ, God invites us to bring our doubts and fears, our joys and our concerns, our petitions and our praise and offer them for the earth and all its creatures. And so we pray for all who experience unrest, conflict, oppression, or violence in this world. We pray for the earth, for care for the earth and climate, and for the balance of ecosystems. We pray for all affected by wildfires in this season. We pray for the work of the inner city pastoral ministry, the lives that are part of that community of faith that reaches out to the wider community of the inner city. We pray for friends and neighbors, for colleagues, for family, and for those whose needs touch our hearts.
Receive these prayers, O God, and transform us through them, that we may have eyes to see and hearts to understand not only what you do on our behalf, but what you call us to do, so that your realm will come to fruition in glory. And we close with the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is found in More Voices, number 212, sent out in Jesus' name. Are there any instructions that we have to follow this? The words on the PowerPoint are exactly how the music is going to be, so just follow those words. Okay, thank you. of Easter, send us forth to live the power of resurrection, that we and all creation might be one with the living Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, one holy God, be honor and praise now and forever. May the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Peace be with you. We sing that benediction together. Peace be with you. Mm-hmm.